Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an example that shows us how to determine if, the event, if events are dependent or independent. All right, we have several methods we can use. We're going to use method one in this case. The example we're going to use is a small college that has a total of 200 students. Of those 200 students, 140 are full-time and 60 are part-time. Of the 140 full-time students, 80 are female and 60 are male. Of the 60 part-time students, 40 are female and 20 are male. So the two events are event A, student that is full-time, event B, student that is female. And the question is, are those dependent events? Now, if there were independent events, we can say that the probability that A will occur, given that B has occurred, is simply equal to the probability of A. So let's use that as a way to figure out if these are dependent or independent events. So first, we're going to figure out the probability of A. A is that the event, that the, uh, event A is that the student is a full-time student. Now, there's a total of 140 full-time students out of 200. So that probability is 140 out of 200, which is equal to 0 0.7. There's a 70% chance picking, uh, picking a random student that that student will be full-time. What about probability of B? Event B is that the student is female. Well, there's a total of 80 females that are full-time and 40 females that are part-time. So there's a total of 120 females out of 200 students. So that's 120 out of 200, which is 0 0.6. All right. Now, if they are independent events, then the probability of A, which is 0.7, should be equal to the probability that A will occur given that B has occurred. All right. Well, let's see what that is equal to. Let's say B has occurred. Well, B, if B has occurred, then that means that the student is a female. So what is the probability that that student will be a full-time student given that it is a female student? Well, let's see here. Out of the, um, if it's a female student, there's a total of 120 female students and 80 of them are full-time students. So it would be 80 of the female students are full-time students, and there's a total of 120 female students. So this is 2 over 3, which is equal to 0 0.667. And you can clearly see that the probability of that A will occur, given that B has occurred, is not the same as the probability of A. Since they are not the same, since the probability that A will occur, given that B has occurred, is not equal to the probability of A, that therefore we can conclude that they must be dependent events. Again, dependent means that the outcome of one will affect the outcome of the other. So now let's calculate the probability of A and B. Well, that is equal to the probability of B multiplied times the probability of A given that B has occurred. So let's go ahead and plug in those numbers. The probability of B is right here, 0 0.6. And we multiply it times the probability of A, that A will occur given that B has occurred, which is, well, that would be 2 thirds. So 3 goes into 0 0.6, that would be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, that would be 0 0.4. Let's see here, that's 12. Yeah, that's, that would be right, 2 thirds, yes. So there we go, this would be, the probability of A and B together. Now let's take a look at that. The probability of A and B, that means that they're both a student full-time and that the student is female. Notice that is equal to 80. That's where the two overlap. That would be 80 out of 200. So 80 out of 200 is indeed 0 0.4. So you can see that that does seem to match up with our, with our Venn diagram. And that's how you can determine if they are dependent or independent events.